Hi peeps, welcome back to another JavaScript basic video. I'm Zen, and in this video we are going to be looking at objects. And if you got excited over JavaScript arrays, my word, you're going to lose it over objects. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we just done arrays and we thought arrays were pretty darn cool. The ability to store multiple values into one variable is extremely useful. But we did hint at the end of that, that actually arrays are a type of an object. And like I said, objects are totally awesome. Uh, in fact, there's a whole programming paradigm called object oriented programming based around objects. And up until recently, this was considered the pinnacle of programming. Uh, you know, like it's one of the hardest programming techniques to get used to, but was considered the best. Let's say let's in a bit of conjecture at the moment, but we won't worry about that. So in order to really understand what an object is and why we think it is awesome, we again need to go back and relook at the current situation with our standard variables and arrays and see the problem that there is and how objects uh, solve it. So when we look back at these, as we can see, we have uh, a variable name and its value as a string here, brilliant. Have it as number, brilliant. And we've got an array with loads of different values, absolutely brilliant. The trouble is all of these variables that we've created, even to some degree within the array, these are all singular they're not really related to each other and that becomes quite a big task or a difficult task to sort of make sure that these values are in sync when we're dealing with big problems and especially for example within games so for some reason whenever i do this i tend to do it with a zoo so we might as well do it with a zoo and so we're going to make a game where people make a zoo for example and our first animal is going to be a panda because pandas are awesome. Okay, so we do a variable here and panda, and we're going to have more than one panda. So panda underscore one and name equals Fred because I'm not very inventive. Then we're going to have its age. So we have panda underscore one underscore age equals i don't know 12 and then it's health so panda underscore one underscore health equals we'll say it's 95 percent okay we're just putting the value 95 and we could go on and on and on and on with all different things you know height weight uh you know mood hunger first levels you know bowel levels you know when does it need to go to the toilet and these are all just the variables okay the the things that sort of describe its current state and although we, i don't think i've done a video yet on functions we would have our animal being able to do stuff so for example panda one whoops underscore eat equals function and so I appreciate I haven't really uh, explained this bit of code here and again there will be another video explaining functions and stuff like that but just like we have variables which are used to hold information, we use things called functions to do things, okay? So it's like setting, uh, a function is a group of actions we want to perform, and so we put it into a function and then we can call the function by its name, which will then allow it to be run whenever we need it to, okay? And I'm just doing this extremely quickly for us here. but. Going back to our panda, we can understand that there's probably about 50 different variables we'd want to have with our panda. You know, colors, you know, um, 
how you know it's not just its normal mood but is it generally a happy panda is it a sad panda uh, all the other bits and pieces as well as loads and loads of functions eating sleeping drinking pooping smiling playing laughing okay there's loads and loads and loads of things we'd want them to do so we could say that maybe we've got 50 uh, variables and 25 functions so that's 75 separate things related to our panda but the truth of the matter is all of these functions and all of these variables are only related to the panda in if you like in your mind they're not truly related okay so for example you know when we get the panda to eat it's only increasing this variable panda one health which in the game we'll be using to represent how healthy our panda is but that's still only on this variable this really these are all separate things that's, that's the best way i can explain it they're separate things they don't really belong to one thing and that's where an object comes into it with an object you create a thing okay and the variables become properties of that object they're actually related to that object they're enclosed by that object okay so and same with the functions the functions become what we call methods okay it's really the same thing uh, but a method is essentially a function acting from an object and this is why i absolutely love objects it makes our lives so much easier now it does get a lot more complicated than this and but at the same time easier because with the object style of programming we also have something called a class which i'm not going to cover in this particular javascript video because i want to try and keep this as short as possible and it's already going to be a long-ish video i want to have to cover it in the python video because it's required you need to create your class in python in order to have an object but in javascript you're lucky enough to be able to just create one-off objects okay and so what we're going to do is to create this same bit of code here but in the object and the object notation i think is still quite nice so we start off with and again like we can do with an array we can do uh, an empty object so we can do let animal if I learn to spell equal and then we use these curly braces okay the technical called braces are sometimes called curly braces um, not brackets not parentheses okay so for clarity they're the normal brackets or parentheses these are our square brackets and as I said these are the parentheses which is shift and the top of the square brackets on a British QWERTY keyboard uh, my students will often say, oh, you mean the one with the nipple on it. If that helps you to remember it, then remember the braces the one with the nipple on it. Okay? Because that's what it looks like, just in the middle. But that is the creation of an empty object. To create your object, there are different ways of adding values to it. But we're just going to start with a fresh one. So we're going to go with Panda. I'm going to call it handle one and again we use the brace and we open and then we're just going to press enter a few times so we can work inside it and it does work a little bit like a function and again I appreciate we haven't done that yet so then inside here we can actually put the properties that we want for our panda so we can do name colon and then the value in this case it is Fred and instead of putting in a semicolon here we actually put in a comma and then we can go for the next one which is age so age colon 12 comma health colon 95 and then when we want to do a function we do the same sort of thing we do eat colon 
function and then the rest is the same so but now this is where it gets a little bit more difficult but rather than saying panda one underscore health plus equals five like we've got here we can actually put this dot health plus equals five okay and this is where it gets really clever because now this keyword this which i know i've not explained yet properly because it's a very big subject and this is meant to be a a, a gentle introduction to it but this says well look for an internal property called health and add the value five to it okay and it's important to note that because i'm inside a function this is where the semicolons are used so it can get a bit confusing when you're doing this but essentially because we're inside a function semicolons used but there isn't use one use elsewhere because it's the end of this uh object we just come out of it okay just like that and now to access the values like we did an array we can do console.log and then we can do panda one dot name save it run it and here we can see we get Fred okay and so this is truly related to this panda whereas before when we did panda one underscore one name and I know that you know I'm using almost the same syntax here you can understand this this is just floating around in the ether it's not related to anything this one is truly related to this panda and now let's see if my if my uh, function works or my method so we do console dot log panda one dot health and if you notice even here in visual studio code it's noticing the properties in fact it even says so here property health okay even tells us it's related so we're going to do that first then we're going to do panda underscore one dot eat so here we are calling the internal function panda one dot eat notice we're using the parentheses okay the reason why we have these by the way so that we can actually send values to it if we need to and again i'll cover that in a completely different video later on but here we are calling the function now what should happen is that if i now copy and paste that here what we hope to see as if i've got already over here at the moment is that when we run this we'll get fred that we've already got we've got health because i've already run this once and we'll get 95 then once we run this we should add five to health and it should come out as 100 so we should see fred 95 and 100 and there we got it fred 95 and 100 and hopefully now you can start to see why objects are really really cool and like i said there is something called classes which i will go into later on um and i have to with the python one anyway and classes are great because what you actually do is that you create the panda class if you like with all of these bits of information already built in all of the functions and all of the things that it needs to be able to do and then each time you want a new panda you just create a panda from that class you can think of a class as a definition file as a saying if you want a panda this is how it's going to look and then when you want a panda you can just create a copy from that design and it's brilliant and i say we'll cover that later on but hopefully you found this really interesting you understood it again if you've got any questions you're not quite sure comment below you know ask me a question that's what i'm here for apparently so that's the end of this video you know what to do with all the buttons below this is then signing out